Our lead this hour coming from Jerry's World. Oh, yeah. I can't go more than a day without talking about the Cowboys. Even when they're bad. They're not bad this year. But uh, So the Cowboys have a date in prime time Sunday night, which means more likely than not, barring some kind of football catastrophe, we will likely be talking about that Colt-Cowboy game to begin our Monday, Sunday into Monday show. But in the lead up to that game, They're dancing around a rockabilly uh, story there uh, from the 1950s. Dak Prescott put in the pressure cooker the Cowboy quarterback. If you didn't hear about this, perhaps not. Let me give you the condensed backstory, and then we'll get to the the meat of the matter. So Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott facing the media, and he was quizzed about that 1957 photograph from Little Rock, Arkansas a desegregation protest photo of Jerry Jones, a still photography picture that had not seen the light of day for many years and popped up last week. And Dak Prescott, being the face of the Cowboy locker room, was quizzed about that. And, well, rather than me tell you what Dak Prescott had to say, let's go to the audio tape. Here is Dak explaining uh, and answering the loaded question. Whether LeBron's talking about the picture, I mean, I think that's that's on Jerry to, to address, right? I mean, in the same sense, it's 65 years ago. And how times have changed. I mean, look the man's resume since then, right? And as I said, I give grace. And um, I think that's a conversation and a question not only for him, but uh, for you guys and, and how y'all feel, how accountable y'all have been in, in covering and discussing the, um, the disparities and differences in race. Um, so, as I said, I'm here for growth and giving grace and, and trying to make this world a better place. And that's who I am in my, at my core and all I believe in. And, um, yeah, unfortunate things come up from the past pictures and, and they show that they show how far we've come. But in the same sense, they're a reminder of, of um, how short of a time that was ago in the same sense. Um, it wasn't that long ago that, that we were all sitting on different sides and that we weren't together. But as I said, I wouldn't be here if it was still that way. So I believe in grace and change. And th- those are questions for Jerry and, and for y'all, honestly, that I don't have quite the answers for. All right. So he kept going back. That was his talking point, the grace and the change there. But in the picture, is a Jerry Jones at age 14, uh, you know, a snot-nosed teenager in the back of a crowd of high school students uh, attempting to block six black kids from entering the high school. So anyway, let us discuss the question. Dak Prescott, was Dak Prescott's response ludicrous or logical? Anytime you talk about issues like this, it's a third rail, my man. People freak out on uh, all sides. I thought it was level-headed, level-headed response by Dak Prescott. I've got Moonlight, arsonist, and puppet master. And we will lock all of these things together, and we're going to make a 10-gallon hat, which is, that's all the rage, those big hats. But back in Texas, they did it in the olden days. All right, so number one. Number one. Number one. Dak Prescott, we have been critical of him on the field, but off the field, this guy is a smooth operator, media savvy. It was a loaded question, right? Loaded question. You have to thread a needle on topics like this, and as a master craftsman, Dak Prescott was nimble, able to maneuver around the booby trap. Because think about it, Jerry Jones is his boss. Dak Prescott cannot be stepping on too many toes here. He's got a uh, you know, he's got to look out for the the locker room, the whole thing, and all that. And uh, but he also has to be mindful uh, if he if he goes too far one direction, it'll explode. It it's it is a booby trap, right? It is a booby trap. And after listening to Dak and watching this and watching the fallout, I believe that he does have a second career lined up that Dak can moonlight as a crisis negotiator. De-escalation. I promise you that is not what the media, the race-obsessed media, was hoping that Dak Prescott would say. They wanted something more to latch on to, and they're upset they didn't get it. But Dak took the air out of the balloon. Right? He, he sat down at the metaphorical negotiating table. He was very calm. He was uh, non-judgmental. 
did not have anger or take offense. It was a rather benign answer. You could say political would be another way to say it. And, of course, since Dak did not give the answer that uh, people were hoping for, certain types that were very upset, the, the race-baiting people, they get, ah, uh, 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 that actually got backlash. Dak Prescott's being called names by the uh, angry mob. How dare you? Uh, upset that he did not uh, take a pound of flesh from the octogenarian owner of the Cowboys. All right, so the second part of this diatribe, a, a question that should be asked, I think it's kind of obvious, is why was Dak Prescott quizzed about the Jerry Jones photo? Right? Uh, you, you follow the breakdowns. Now, as he mentioned, there's a 65-year-old story. But it was brought back out of the cobwebs by a, a group of uh, scribes from the Washington Post who unearthed the photo. But it was, it was a week ago. It was during Thanksgiving week. It laid dormant, didn't get much attention at all for roughly a week. And then LeBron James said, all right, I got something now. I got something. He made sure it had juice. So LeBron is the arsonist in this story. Right? The fire was started by the Washington Post, but it fizzled out, and LeBron's like, hey, I, I think I can start the fire again. I'd like to start. And he had a conniption fit, whining to reporters that he hadn't been asked to comment on the photo, which is a 10 out of 10, right? Because LeBron, he loves a good racial brouhaha, as long as it's not related to like anti-Semitism, he doesn't like to go there uh, and, unless uh, he gets signed off by Nike or his buddies in China. When it comes to those kind of things, he, he just shuts up and dribbles. I also love the fact so many athletes, when it comes to the media relations, they're like, eh, you know, I'm only here to talk about football. Like Deshaun Watson, right? Watson only want to talk about football. And when it when it fits your agenda, you you only want to talk about football. But when when it fits another agenda, like LeBron's obviously big into the racial issues and things like that, he he uh, he likes to be on top of those things. So when he comes to this, he's like, oh, I want to come on it. He didn't play in the NFL. He didn't play for the Cowboys. He's got no association with the Cowboys. So who cares what LeBron James thinks about Jerry Jones? But he's then lecturing the media. And we mentioned this the other day in a previous episode. He's like he's lecturing the media. Oh, I can't believe I wasn't asked about this. You know, blah 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 blah. You know, playing the victim card and all. It's just ridiculous. And so Dak Prescott can thank the arsonist LeBron James there, uh, who in in this story LeBron gets the puck with a P treatment as into the penalty box. And uh, I believe they still have that the the two minutes uh, for being an instigator. So I, they tack on two minutes there in the penalty box. As an instigator. Now, final point. What are the chances that this Jerry Jones story continues to mushroom into a bigger deal? Right? We we saw it came out a week ago, not a lot to it. LeBron, the arsonist, fire starts up again. Dak calms the fire down. Are we going to see activists protesting at Jerry's world this weekend? Are, are we going to see? Are you going to see people walking around with picket signs? Will, will somebody run out in the field with a sign and a smoke bomb and try to get attention? So I, I think it's it's obviously a possibility. I mean, th those who make their living stirring up racial hatred and and and, and those kind of things, it's red meat, right? And we are at a fork in the road with this story. Now, my gut tells me that this is not going to escalate much further, and I'll tell you why. Dak calmed it down. Jerry has addressed this. He recently told the media that he, uh, he, you know, he was a spectator at the high school. He was a sophomore in Arkansas. And he claims, we can debate whether this is true or not, he claims he didn't know the gravity of, of what was going on. That's what he said. Uh, but we have not seen, this is another part of these stories, having done this for a few years, it's not my first barbecue, we haven't seen a line of people who are running out to collaborate? Jerry's a racist, and and here's what he did, and like we haven't seen that. I, I, when Donald Sterling uh, was involved in a in a story years ago, there were people lined up around the building. It was like they were giving away free TVs to tell stories about what a scumbag Sterling was. I haven't seen that about Jerry. Uh, we we have, and, and and so if that 
starts popping up, like whack-a-mole, that would certainly extend things. The other part of this is Jerry Jones, because of the wealth he has and because of the influence he has, is the puppet master. He controls the media in Dallas. They, they're at his behest. They genuflected Jerry. Plus, he's also got connections at all the big media companies from his relations going back to the 1980s in the NFL. And so that does lead to stories like this kind of kind of going away. Right? And if you're not on, on that, uh, that list, these things continue. But it's a 65-year-old story. It's wild. Wild and crazy. We'll keep an eye on it. We'll see if anything happens. And, of course, we will be here to give hot takes all night long.